Hello, physicists. Today, we're going to start working with electricity in circuit diagrams. This is very important because we need to understand how electricity behaves in different types of circuits. And the first type of circuit we're going to examine is a series circuit. So this is part of the lesson uh, titled series circuits, and we want to determine current voltage and resistance in series circuits. Now, I'm going to give you three simple definitions of these. All right. When I say current, I'm talking about the flow of electricity across a circuit. All right. And a circuit is something that will connect electricity from point A to point B. Now, when we say voltage, we're talking about uh, the battery or another type of energy source that will power the circuit. Okay. So without plugging a circuit in, all right, to a battery or another source of electricity, there will be no current flowing through it. So every series circuit that we discussed today will have a certain voltage for it. And now resistance, this is kind of the trickiest thing. I like to go from the word itself, which means to, um, to hold back from something happening, or I guess or to prevent something happening. Resistance is so important in circuits because without it, uh, current will flow um, without any sort of, I guess you could say, tempering, okay? When I say tempering, what I specifically mean is that current needs to be uh, made to behave in an orderly way. If there is no resistance on a circuit, current will flow too fast uh, and we won't be able to access electricity in an orderly way. Therefore, well, uh, things that we call resistors are especially important. So I'm going to show you a simple series circuit in a diagram. So we see here we have a battery of 120 volts, and then we have resistors and uh, this um, kind of horseshoe symbol that we see next to 30, 15, 15, and 15. Um, that is the symbol for ohms, which is a measure of resistance. Now we need those resistors, and by combining in an equation we can figure out exactly how much current is flowing through this. Now, the important thing to know with current uh, is that it's going to be the same throughout, all right? So they say I total equals I1 equals I2 equals I3. We measure current in a unit called the ampere. So an ampere is for current. Ohms are for resistance. Finally, volts are for voltage. And as I said before, current is a measure, measure of electrical flow. Resistance is the prevention or tempering of electrical flow. Finally, voltage is the electrical power in a circuit, all right? And those are simple definitions. Now, despite the fact that we have resistors of different sizes across the series circuit, the amount of current that flows through is always going to be the same. And so to calculate it, what we need to do is we need to add up all of the resistance and take the voltage and divide that by the total resistance. Now I'm going to erase this. And I'm going to write out that, that definition. You'll see this in your reference table as well. Uh, for series circuits, series circuits, we know that V is going to be V divided by RT, which is our total resistance, is going to equal our current, all right? And so that's going to be the game of the game. The first step that we're going to take to figure out our current is going to be to get RT, and that's going to equal the sum of all our individual resistors in that series circuit. And the second step will be to do V divided by that RT, and that will give us our current. All right. The final thing that I should mention is I know this is a series circuit because there is a single lane for all of the current to flow on. We will start covering a different type of circuit in the next video that will be called a parallel circuit. 
And that will, that will mean that there are multiple lanes for current to flow through. And all of the behavior and the relationship between voltage, resistance, and current changes completely when we have a parallel circuit. For now, let's just try to master series circuits. And so now that we have those definitions, we can go down, we can take a look at some problems and see how we do. All right, they have one example here that is solved for us. All right, we have four 15 ohm resistors that are connected in a series with a 45 volt battery. All right, so they worked it out in the next slide and I'm just gonna walk you through it. If we have four 15 ohm resistors, that means we add 15 four times and we get 60 ohms and that is our total resistance. All right, so we can picture this as R1, R2, R3, and R4 over here. I'm just going to extend this a little bit so we can see all those linked up. All right, we add up all those individual resistances. Uh, and we get the total resistance. And then we can say that the current is the voltage divided by the resistance. We get 45 over 60, and that is in amperes, and that's 0 0.75 amperes. Pretty simple. So I'm going to walk you through one of the independent work examples to close. All right. So if we're considering a circuit consisting of three resistors, each providing its own resistance value, the total resistance is 21. Which of these combinations would be valid? What you want to think to yourself in these situations is with A through D, which of the four answer choices provide a sum of 21? I say 21 because that's the total resistance of the circuit, as they told us. And we can see that D works. And also C would work because 5 plus 12 is 17. And 17 plus 4 is 21. All right. A and B would not work because if we add those three numbers in either A or B, we'll get a different number from 21. Now. I'm just going to walk it through, walk you through it again. If we're calculating the total resistance and we know that we have a series circuit, we have um, resistances, individual resistors of six, four, and two ohms. We want to add them up to find the total resistance. And hopefully you can add those three numbers and see which one of these four answer choices actually makes sense. Now, the final thing that I want to talk about before I close this video is that the voltage will not drop across um, a series circuit. There will be different behavior, as I said before, in a parallel circuit, which we'll discuss next time. But when it comes to a series circuit, we know that there are no uh, voltage drops at all. Okay. And so if each individual voltage drop has a value of five volts, then we know the value of the total voltage has to be the same because the voltage drops are consistent and equal to the total voltage when it comes to a series circuit. So these are the principles. I'm gonna put them text on this page again. Voltage remains consistent across a series circuit. Total resistance is equal to the sum of all individual resistors in a series circuit. And finally, current is equal to quotient of voltage divided by total resistance in a series circuit. That's shown by V is equal to I for current divided by RT for total resistance. All right, again, this is only for a series circuit. These are the main principles driving series circuits. So do the practice, do the rest of your practice on your own, all right, and get this in your head. 
but also remember that you have to look very closely to see that you're dealing with a series circuit in order for this information to be valid. Next time we'll discuss parallel circuits. I hope this has been helpful and I will talk to you soon.